This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today I'm going to give you a brief glimpse at a part of my portable catalog workflow. My primary catalog that we're looking at here is located on a Windows machine in my home studio. But when I'm out on the road, I bring a MacBook Pro along with me, and so I use Lightroom on the Mac on OS X. Lightroom is compatible between the two platforms, and in fact the catalogs that we create are compatible as well. And this compatibility provides the strategy for me to implement my portable catalog solution. Recently I visited Colorado and went on a ski trip, and when I did, I started a new catalog on my MacBook. During the course of several days, I took over 400 images, as you can see here, and I stored those locally on the hard drive of my Mac so that I would have easy access to them. Of course, I also made backup copies on an external hard drive for safekeeping. Now that I've got this catalog created on the Mac, I want to bring this over and merge it into my Windows catalog. So what I'm going to do is select the top-level folder here, and I've got this organized by date. So I'll just pick the top level 2014 folder and then within Lightroom I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to choose export as catalog. This brings up the export as catalog dialog box and we're going to need to give our exported catalog a name. I'm simply going to call this ski trip since that's the topic of these pictures. I'm going to store this on my desktop and when we're exporting, we can choose to export selected photos only, but I'm going to deselect this and that will cause the entire 443 photos to be exported. We can choose whether or not to export the negative files, which are the actual original photos, and we can choose whether to build and include smart previews and any available previews. In this case, I'm going to choose all three because I want to pick this catalog up lock, stock, and barrel, and merge it into my existing Windows catalog. So with the desktop selected, I'm going to click Export Catalog, and Lightroom goes to work. It's going to export all these images to the folder on the desktop, and once it's done, we'll be able to see the results. Now that the export process is finished, we can minimize Lightroom and sure enough, here's the ski trip folder right here on the desktop. If we open up this folder, we can see that there is a subfolder called Pictures that contains all of the photos in subfolders just as they were in the original catalog. Furthermore, we have our Lightroom catalog file. We have a Smart Previews and a Previews.lr data file. So everything that we've asked Lightroom to export has been placed within this ski trip folder. Now one thing to bear in mind, this can get quite large depending on the size of the catalog you're exporting. If I look at this particular folder, we can see that it's over 13 gigabytes on the disk. Now at this point, I'm going to want to transfer this folder over to my Windows machine, and I'll use an external hard drive to do that. Now here we are on the Windows machine, and at this point, I've placed this folder here on my Windows desktop. And if we open it up, we can see the same contents that we saw on the Mac. So I'll go back to Lightroom, and now from within my existing catalog, I'm going to choose from the File menu, Import from another catalog. I can browse to the desktop, choose the Ski Trip folder, and within this, I'll choose Ski Trip.lrcat, which is my Lightroom catalog, and I'll click on Open. I get the Import Catalog dialog box, and there are some similarities between this and a standard import dialog box. First of all, we see the folders that are going to be imported, and we can validate that there are 443 photos, just as we saw on the Mac, split up into these subfolders. Now these are all new photos, so the next part of the dialog gives me the choice to decide what to do. I can add them in their current location, or I can copy them to a new location, or I can skip them entirely. In this case, I'm going to copy them to a new location, and I'm going to choose the location of my current Lightroom Originals, which for me are located on Drive E in my Originals folder. 
and I'll select that folder. So now we can see that they're going to E slash originals. If there were any existing photos that we were importing, it would give us the option to do something with those here. Within the preview, we can see thumbnails of the photos that are going to be imported, and we can choose individually whether to include or not to include specific pictures. I want to include everything, so I'm going to go ahead and click Import and Lightroom goes to work. Once Lightroom finishes the import process, we can see the photos here displayed, and we can see that it's loaded the full path, including the pictures and the 2014 folder structure underneath the Originals folder where I asked it to be placed. Now that's a little bit different from what I wanted, so I can simply take these five folders here with the dates, and I can drag them over and move them into the 2014 folder. Now it's important I do this within Lightroom so that Lightroom knows where I've placed the files. Now at this point I've gotten all my images in their folders into Lightroom, into my main catalog. Because we transferred the catalog over, we have all of the developed settings and we have all of the keywords as well included for all these images. By exporting as a catalog from my Lightroom catalog on the Mac and then importing from a catalog into my main catalog, I've been able to bring over all of the Lightroom information from my MacBook into my Windows PC and now I'm good to go with my main catalog. This is just part of my portable Lightroom overall strategy and I'll be covering some additional tips and tricks in future videos and I hope you'll watch those. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips, tricks, and information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.